Hi, Jim Hoffman here from EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. You know, with winter approaching, and uh, some of the East Coast here got hit with some snow and some uh, winter weather, I think it was kind of important uh, to talk a little bit about hypothermia and maybe go over a little bit some of the EKG features you might see on the monitor for patients who are suffering from hypothermia. You know, hypothermia, it, it's present when uh, a patient's core temperature is less than 35 degrees Celsius, and as the body temperature temperature is going to fall below its normal levels, uh, what you're going to see is you can see a lot of uh, cardiovascular and electrophysiological changes that might be occurring. and um, some of the earliest changes that you might see in an EKG is an artifact, an artifact, and, and that's usually due to shivering. Um, but some hypothermic patients also can have uh, really normal EKG tracing. So um, the ability to shiver, you know, diminishes as the body's temperature falls. So keep that in mind that just because the patient's not shivering doesn't mean that they're not hypothermic. Um, and that shivering is really uncommon uh, when a patient has a core temperature that falls below 32 degrees uh, Celsius. So as the body, temp that body temperature uh, falls you know, further and further, uh, you know, metabolic and cardiovascular processes start to slow down. Um, you know, the parts pacemakers and conductions uh, decline. Uh, and this can, you know, wind up showing you get bradycardic patients. You might see heart blocks, uh, maybe some uh, prolongation of uh, P to R, uh, QRS, even QT intervals. And when you get patients that start getting below 32 degrees Celsius, you'll have regular and, and organized um, atrial activation is going to wind up disappearing, and this is going to get replaced by, uh, you know, different uh, degrees of like slow irregular activity. So if that core temperature for the patient does fall below uh, even uh, 28 degrees Celsius, that's when you might even see something like a junctional bradycardia uh, on, on, the, uh, on the monitor. Um, one thing that is, is seen in uh, hypothermic patients is uh, you get, again, something like this here where you've got a, uh, uh, you know, the shivering type artifact uh, going on. But the other thing you're going to see a lot of times too is that J wave you might have heard about, or that Osborne wave. And this is uh, sometimes a more specific uh, finding in hypothermia, but um, you can also see it um, uh, uh, things like hypercalcemia, um, uh, central nervous system disorders. Uh, things like head injury, massive head injuries, and subarachnoid hemorrhages. So, uh, but you, when you when you think about your clinical picture, when you're of course evaluating your patient, you're a hypothermic patient, you might look for this J wave, and you know you can even see it in things like drug effects as well. But what you're going to want to see is char characteristic of the of the J wave, which is this dome or this hump here that you're seeing, and it's really best seen probably in your uh, left chest lead so um, and a lot of times it's it also the size of the J wave is actually going to wind up correlating with the severity of the hypothermia as well usually less than 30 degrees Celsius but you know it's going to vary across patient to patient and you know this doesn't really affect our treatment of course you know for us in EMS we're going to focus more on uh, BLS interventions, airway control or rewarming things like that uh, for hypothermic patients but I thought that it was just nice and just kind of a good idea to make you a little bit aware of what you might see when you talk about uh, EKG rhythms and hypothermia so when you see things like this you're not kind of thrown off that something else is going on that it can be the normal presentation that you're going to see for patients who are severely uh, hypothermic so just to show you go with just some more features real quick what you're going to you know again you get that artifact that tremoring from the artifact you're going to see from the ship from the shivering um maybe a fib going on again the j wave the osborne waves junctional bradycardias 
uh, those prolongation, those prolongation of the P to R, Q R S, Q T intervals, um, and you get those premature beats, right? You get the PVCs, uh, V TAC or V fib, of course, and then of course a systole. Now, um, ventricular arrhythmias are the most common mechanism of uh, of death in patients uh, from hypothermia, and they, you know, sometimes actually you might see you know, things like the VTAC and VFib more when you get patients who are being rewarmed during the rewarming process as the body's, you know, temperature rises, um, especially to uh, between like 28, 32 degrees uh, Celsius. So, of course, we can't take temperatures out in the field. Most of us don't take temperatures out into the field. So, you're going to have to, of course, you know, monitor the EKG, monitor the patient. And uh, again, you know, your focus is on your protocol. Your focus is on primarily probably the BOS end of, uh, of the care as far as rewarming airway control, uh, monitoring vital signs and, and transport. Um, you know, some protocols have uh, fluid, warming fluid you're going to give to them, uh, you know, depending upon where you are, what, what location you're in, and what your protocols are, it's going to, of course, vary and depend on what is available to you uh, to treat. Uh, hypothermic patients. So just something to keep in mind. I thought it was just interesting to kind of point out some of these EKG variations that you might see. So if you get a hypothermic patient uh, during this season, uh, you kind of be aware of what to look out for and to kind of be aware of, you know, these different types of abnormalities you might see and also be aware of the fact that the ventricular arrhythmias like VTAC and VFib might occur while you're rewarming the patient. So listen, I hope you can remove, use some of these uh, Monday minutes. And again, remember to go ahead and follow your protocols at all times and follow what is best for the patient. And, and while this information is nice to know, it's, uh, it's more important to follow your protocols. More important, of course, to follow what's best for the patient. And again, if you have hypothermia, there's going to be more of the BLS end of it. So uh, if you have some minutes of your own, be sure to send them over to me. It's Jay Hoffman at ems-safety.com. I hope maybe you can use these Monday minutes in your day-to-day -day activities. And be sure to join me over at emsofficehours.com and join me in the weekly podcast where we talk about a variety of EMS industry topics. And I hope to get some of your intake and find out what you're thinking regarding the EMS industry. So uh, until next Monday, of course, this is Jim Hoffman from EMS office hours, stay safe.